and welcome to Broker Connect. This is a bi-weekly live session with Arrive users, Arrive users, where you can learn best practices, get insight into how other brokers are using the system, and get tips from these seasoned users as well. So we have an awesome panel today. I'm so excited. I'm here with Matt Gouget, aka Matt the Mortgage Guy, and Gilbert Bennett from My Easy Mortgage. And we are ready to get down to business, ready to share insights with you to help you grow your business and get the most out of the Arrive platform. But before we get into it, I do wanna let you know about some other cool stuff we have going on at Arrive. So for new users, we've got two sessions of new user training every Wednesday at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Eastern. We also have office hours every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Arrive University, where you can learn about the platform's latest updates and enhancements. That's every other week. And we also have Arrive Intellect, which is a new monthly series that brings together experts in the real estate industry to discuss trends and how to get ahead. So as you can see, we like to offer you plenty of opportunities for learning and support. So be sure to take advantage of those. All right. Now let's dive into Broker Connect. So Matt Gilbert, welcome and thank you so much for being here thanks for having us yeah glad to be here all right matt i'm going to kick it over to you first to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your brokerage and then gilbert you can do the same cool yeah thanks thanks again for having me kelly uh big fan of arrive so so happy to be on and share with other brokers you know how much i'm, I'm loving the platform i'm a mortgage broker out in sacramento california powered by the U mortgage platform made the switch to U mortgage in October of 2021. And that's when I also made the switch over to arrive. It's been amazing. We'll jump into different things, you know, that I'm loving about the platform, but um, been originating loans since 2014, spent four and a half years in retail and then in 2018 transferred over um, to the broker space. So uh, that's Matt, the mortgage guy in a nutshell. Well, uh, I'm dependent with my my easy mortgage down in Tampa, uh, in Florida, other side of the country there, a little bit different, but we both get good good bit of sunshine, I hope. Um, I've been originating loans since 2014, started out as a broker with Sam Wax, my partner, uh, and we used Calix for a long time. And then when uh, the new 3-4 came out, they didn't seem to have an idea like any forewarning that that was going to happen despite the two years of <laughs> delays. And so we immediately needed a way to aid loans. We couldn't even get three, four uploaded to our lending partners at that point. So we switched over uh, in to, to arrive because we checked out a couple of the platforms. We made a move on like a Thursday. We were set up and active probably by uh, after making the decision within 24, 48 hours max, and we're able to get back to the business of rigid loans instead of having to manually input or copy over data from a customer. So it was really important for us and made a big difference in, in how we were able to continue to do business once that 3-4 came out. That's awesome. Awesome to hear. So. Gilbert, you came from Calix Point, and I think Matt, you you said the same, right? Yep. So, when did you guys first find out about Arrive? How did you find out about it? Um, I'll start because I think I heard about it probably at AIM conference, probably as early as 2018. Um, you know, I know that it, it was it was you know something that, that took a while to stand up, right? You, you don't just, you know, flick a switch and, and arrive as, you know, a fully functioning platform and ready to roll. And so during those early days, I was hearing a lot about it. And I think probably like most originators, you know, change is difficult, right? So if I have, you know, a process flow and I'm doing things and my processor is familiar with Calix Point, as archaic as that is, you know, you attach a few other, you know, technology platforms like Flowify to it. And you're like, okay, we can get by, right? And now looking back, I didn't know what I didn't know about all the functionality of Arrive, about how amazing Arrive was. Um, but, you know, hearing about it in 2018, 2019, 2020, um, I, I heard great things from great brokers that I liked and respected about the, you know, how much they loved it. Um, didn't make the switch until last year. And I think 
looking back, it's like, man, I wish I would have done it sooner. And probably, you know, my, my call to action for, for brokers would be, trust me, like you're not hearing from a bunch of highly successful brokers about how great the platform is for no reason, right? There's, there's legitimacy behind that. And, you know, for, for me and Gilbert, I don't know his specific experience, but Jesus, Calix point, like that thing is about as archaic as it gets when it comes to, to platforms and everything else we have in the mortgage space, you know, there's been so much advanced, there's so much, you know, integration of great technologies that it's almost embarrassing to look at something like Calix and realize that we were using that to originate loans, you know, 2020, 2021. Yeah, and I think you hit on an interesting point, which is kind of universal in that people are are reluctant to change, especially people who are busy running their businesses day in and day out. So, Gilbert, can you talk to me a little bit about how the um, transition to arrive was for you and your team? Well, we kept asking them, are y'all going to have a way for us to mass export and import our clients? And they were like, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth of the matter is the the system was so much easier to take a loan application or you know, an LOA is taking a loan application um, or we're taking a loan application. Really, it's a three page app versus when eight switch three, four came out, we were looking at, um, I don't know, seven, eight, nine pages of clicking through and data that didn't seem to carry over correctly in Calix. So for us, the, the switch and being just being able to take the loan application itself and get all the critical data, being able to export a file that we can to our lenders that I read over data fields, a huge difference uh, from from Kaylee to here. Even today, and I mean, we still maintain the base was in Kaylee to Kaylee up until maybe a month or two ago. Even today, they still haven't simplified her just uh, customer in an app, like the, the interface to take an application and arrive. If you're going to sit at a desk, it means that a bigger could really jump in, answer the questions on the pages and have a complete app that is accurate, that is uh, underwritable, that is going to make for a smooth process. If you feel it makes it easy. So the, the, the switch, the transfer over, I mean, we didn't really move all of our files. We imported those that we needed, that pre-approvals, and that other database, we kind of excelled it, you know, and said, hey, here's how we can touch and put to the CRM. But uh, the ability to take a loan app is so much better. The customer interface um, for the loan app is so much easier uh, to, to complete their loan application. And then our ability to use the app that was taken to a lender just simple, simple, simple importing or uh, easy to do, taking a loan app easy to do. It just all I say is it's, it's kind of night and day. Um, it, you can't, you can very easily miss a bunch of crap in Kalix. You it, you got to work at missing stuff and arrive. Like you, you click through the buttons. I mean, you click through the three pages you need to click through. And if you missed something, you were trying to because it's telling you, <laughs> hey, we don't have all the necessary data here. You know, like you, you really have put an effort into it when your app is incomplete. Matt, can you talk a little bit about the transition for you? What was that like? Was there anything that surprised you about it? Well, I think I think there were all good surprises, to be honest, right? It's like the fear of the unknown for 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 Gilbert, for myself, for any broker out there is like, you know, I don't understand this. It's going to take a while. You know, my processor needs to learn it. My LOAs need to learn it. You know, I need to learn it. And like the 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 ease of use, right? I think that's why millions of people have iPhones, right? It's like super easy to use and. Um, I was thinking about like comparisons, like arrive an iPhone where it's great technology, it's easy to use and it keeps getting better, right? That's something that, that we should at least spotlight a little bit is that Calix point is old and archaic and broken and continues to be so for decades at a time. Arrive is amazing, does a lot of stuff that makes our job easier and literally is getting updated every single week to be better. 
right? And so um, it was it was a queer, fairly quick transition. And and for me, um, I don't want to forget about like my very favorite part of Arrive. And and you know, so I'll just insert it here. The ability to communicate amongst team members is is amazing. And you know, every broker across the country runs their shop a little bit different. The makeup of their branch and their support staff and everything is going to be different. But no matter what the case, you've got multiple people working on a transaction, trying to deliver a best in class client experience. And so if I talk to a client and they tell me something, I need to communicate that to the team. If an LOA gets a bit of information from a client um, and wants to pass it on to the processor, like that communication you know, needs to go on. If you're working at a Calix point and something else for, for, for loan apps, um, who knows what you're doing, right? Is it text message? Is it email or something within arrive? Like my, one of my favorite features, um, is, you know, the notes, right? In the notes section, you tag people on the team. So they get an email notification of it, but the team knows, look in these notes and it says, here's the pricing plan. We want to go out at this rate. We want to do a 30 day lock. We want to send it to this lender. We want this much to show up in box A. All that stuff is communicated. And ultimately, like when you're able to work out of one system and have all that internal communication, the client on the other end of the experience has a better experience and then refers you more business in the future. That is something that like I can't speak enough about how much I appreciate the heck out of that note function in Arrive. Um, it's been something that we've continued to like work as a team to just, you know, get as efficient as possible, as good as, as possible, internal communication. That's awesome. I'm glad you brought up um, one of your favorite features. I'm definitely going to dig in more around both of your favorite features and what you guys are using the most or, or maybe what's most beneficial to your business. However, I do kind of want to go back to something that Gilbert, you had mentioned, you were talking about how you know, it's kind of hard to to miss something or to mess up when you're when you're in the system. You really have to work at that. And it's awesome to hear that it's been so intuitive for you. Um, but I did want to ask, did you or your team take part in any of our trainings? You heard me rattle it off at the beginning. We have a ton of trainings available for new users, for new users and also, um, you know, users who have, who have been around for a while. But did you or your team take advantage of any of those? So yeah, when we first signed up, Harish actually hosted a couple trainings um, for us to one figure out how to take the loan app, right? How to how to work through the system, uh, import export because that was important at the time. Getting the three fours in from Calix or importing three twos and having the system convert to a three four. Um, and since then, I know my processing manager has really taken a lot of the trainings and learned a lot of the features, watched the videos and stuff. I can't say I've had to, you know, to be honest with you, my main goal is to go out and generate business. And if I need to grab an app and look at a credit report, boom, I know how to do that much. And that's all that's really required. I know how to export a three, four, so I can put it into a lender system. If I take that good three, four, I'm starting out really well. Uh, so it, I don't even think, to be honest with you, the trainings are necessary. They're helpful on the processing side. They're helpful on the back end to make sure um, if you want to get your call reports in, if you want to, to get your, if you want to do more with the kind of sorting by dates and times, like for your product team, just being able to filter by loan status, right, is a, is a big one to and keeping your files updated and all that stuff. But um, so hard to I, I wouldn't even say a training is necessary. That, that's like Matt said, how the system is. You pop in there, you can create a loan app. You can get that loan app over to a lending partner uh, if need be. You can price a loan with all the with a lot of the, our major broker partners. You can price the loan. So it's it's for me been really, um, like I say, really easy to use and really helpful in originating uh, quick so that I can get to the next customer, get to the next client, uh, get the file moving forward. Love hearing that. Matt, did you take advantage of any trainings? Yeah, when we first started out, you know, similar to Gilbert, I'm not necessarily, you know, in the trenches doing every piece of it. Um, but, you know, between LOAs and processors and everybody else, um, you know, not just arrive trainings, but then internal trainings at U Mortgage, where we've got, 
you know, folks that have been on a Rive platform for, for longer than, than we have. You know, we got Kyle and Jimmy out in Utah. Those guys um, have, have more experience with it. And so they share their best practices. Um, and um, so definitely did it. But, but like Gilbert says, you know, I pride myself in being a simple dude. <laughs> like, so um, I'm no tech genius. I'm no engineer. If I can understand it, I think anybody can. And, and really, you know, to Gilbert's point as well, from a high level, being able to pop in and not be the, you know, LOA on the file or the processor on the file, or even the loan originator, if you're managing a branch to go in there and just be able to, you know, spot check stuff, um, send out a quick pre-approval letter. Maybe somebody wants to, ch to change their, you know, qualification amount. Like you, you run dual AUS in the system. Everything is there in one spot. Um, and so it's, it's really intuitive. The trainings are, are probably just to brush up. Um, and I would imagine that, you know, different shops that have, you know, different setups are going to have different best practices. And so they're going to trickle that down from, you know, their operations or processing staff to how, how they're going to best utilize a, an amazing platform. Cool. So I heard you mention um, dual AUS, which is one that we hear a lot. Um, people tend to bring that up as, as one of their favorite features. Can you talk a little bit about, about that feature and how helpful or, or how that personally helps you? Yeah, I mean, dual AUS in general, you know, running, you know, Fannie and Freddie's systems at the same time. I remember having this conversation years ago where like I, it, it blew my mind that not everybody was running both on every file. Um, but if, if you're not being in arrive it's literally a click of a button run one click aus is the button you press right once you have all the credentials and everything synced like that's how easy it is um and so um it's it's run on every single file i don't see why anyone wouldn't um in a market like this where we're all chasing purchase business you're going to have real estate agents that want that um even if you didn't right in, in the best interest of the client and really being able to say Yes, we've we've taken a full app, we've got all the documentation, and we've run the automated system to say this loan is going to approve. Um, that means something is worth something, and more importantly, I think for for the brokers out there, uh, you know, guys like me and Gilbert that are pounding the streets trying to chase down business, I don't want it to be hard, right? I want to click one button to do that, and that's 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 what's you know most important to me is the ease of it. Yeah. Gilbert, can you talk a little bit about um, your favorite features or, or, you know, certain features that may help you and your business? Well, I, like I mentioned up front, uh, the three page app is huge for me. It, page one, property info. Page two, uh, borrowers contact info and history. Page three is um, financial etc financial and, and liability info the simplicity of the application is great i mean you look at the new erla and what was that thing nine <laughs> you know you do laugh because you got a uh, of it i had a client that told me well i'm not comfortable doing it on a computer can i come in and, and can and pick up a paper application i was like no no you may not <laughs> I, I don't need the problem of you trying to fill out 13 pages. I said, you can come in, sit at my desk, and I'll key up the info because that's what it is. But again, Matt mentioned the dual AUS. How many times do you get an appraisal waiver from Freddie that you didn't get from Fannie on a 20% down deal? How much better does that make it when you're talking to the listing agent and saying, hey, I can close this thing in 14 days. I can close this thing in seven days. If you get me to title, if your title company gets me to title work quickly, I don't need an appraisal. I've got all my docs. I don't need the appraisal. I don't, you know, I can move fast because I've run it through both systems to determine that. You know, that was just to point out one lender, United Wholesale, that was a huge selling point for them, being able to put a system in when they first did it, being able to put that system in, run dual AUS and figure out, oh, wow, I get an appraisal waiver on Freddie. Uh, that wasn't available on Fannie. And before with Calix, we were struggling to run Freddie. We jack up, you know, and we would run Fannie and have a smoother process. We mostly defaulted uh, there. Being able to run them both simultaneously, getting 
figuring out even and even just getting back the error messages that say, hey, here's the problem <clears throat> um, that you need to go fix on the app makes it easy, you know, makes, makes it easy. So I would say the top two features, in my opinion, the simplicity of the application, you know, those three pages of information being complete with it. Uh, and two, like, like Matt loves the dual AUS feature at the click of a button, um, is, is key and cool, you know, key and critical. Yeah, we definitely, you know, we hear that a lot. People love that feature and, and I love hearing how helpful it's been for other people. Um, but I do want to touch on something you mentioned, Gilbert. So you were talking about your experience with a client and maybe that particular client wasn't so tech savvy, but how has the client experience been overall? How do how do clients feel about this? Uh, most of them never have a problem with the application. I mean, every now and again, we get issues for our retired clients. They don't know which income type to select, but almost every client who's had the duty online app, I ask them, do you prefer to take the app over the phone? Are you comfortable doing it on a computer? And a majority of them say, oh, I want to do it at my own convenient time. I'll do it tonight. And we might see them logging in and popping that thing on and have a submitted time of 9.58 p.m., 12.30, 12.35 a.m., you know, something like that. Uh, no issues. You know, we, we get complete apps from the client where we, same the issues you would have with any system where maybe they didn't give the exact income type correctly. But other than that, very easy for them to use, easy for them to get into the system haven't had any issues on the client side of things, uh, being able to complete the loan application, which is great. Being as simple, it asks some questions, they answer some questions. It doesn't even really feel like they're filling in 13 pages of information when they get done. Awesome. Matt, can you talk a little bit about what the POS has been like for your clients? Yeah, for sure. And I think that I'll speak to the application process, which is smooth and easy and getting it in, um, is 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 awesome i i loved flowify I'll, I'll i'll be honest about that um and so i was afraid that i was going to lose some of the functionality of a clean easy app um being able to request documents from clients you know through that and have them securely upload it arrive is all that flowify was and more um so i'm happy to report that, that you know all, all my fears uh were were you know squashed once once i got into arrive but not only is it clean and easy to take an application to upload supporting docs to tag the docs and do everything you need to do in there but the in process that's where i've seen you know the client experience really like taken up a notch on on my side clients love the in process updates it's customizable right so you can choose which ones they get you can choose who gets it I can tell you with absolute certainty, and this is where brokers, you know, if you're zoning out listening to this, listen to this piece of it, because the most important thing to you is like, how do I get more business in, in a year like this year? Getting more business is probably something that people are going to listen to. Those updates, when they go out to list side, buy side, clients alike, I've gotten deals because list side is like, man, I love those updates you guys send, right? It's clean. Loan is conditionally approved appraisal's been ordered, whatever you want, right? Like you don't have to have it at every touch point, but that's like part of my, my pitch to the listing agent is look at how we operate. Look at how we update everybody. Look at how we close loans quickly. Let's do some business together. I've literally had agents say, it was so great working with you. And I tell them, this doesn't have to be the last time. Let's work together some more, right? When they're on the list side, like, hey, guess what? You enjoyed working with us you've got an opportunity to work with us some more, right? It's totally up to you. Just send your clients over to get pre-approved. And then um, one thing I'll, I'll mention too, as far as like getting business and realtor partnerships and client experience is the, the co-branded application. If you have a realtor in Arrive as a business contact, you upload their headshot, you go to that business contact and you copy that URL. It's an application that not only has Matt, the mortgage guy branding, but now has the realtor branding real. I've gotten feedback from realtor partners that say, Hey, you know, when I share your link, people are not sure if they're in the right place or not. Doesn't sure if it's coming from me. Sometimes they're weary. Okay, great. Here's an application that's branded with both of us, the lending partner and the realtor partner. For whatever reason, if that makes a client feel more comfortable, Oh, Susie 
sent this to me. This is Susie and her lender partner who work together as a team. Um, better client experience there results in more referrals, res results in, in better realtor relationships, which ultimately more referrals there as well. So Arrive has not only been a platform that's been easy to use and made the business easier, but it's like directly translated to more future business. I love that you brought up the um, realtor aspect because that was my next question. So you're ahead of me on that. <laughs> so love hearing that. Gilbert, do you have anything to share as far as what the um, realtor experience has been on your side? Well, you know, the one thing we've done or what I like to do is add the agent to the pre-approved. You know, one thing that uh, agents get frustrated with is when their client is shopping them. Uh, or client is not necessarily loyal to them, but because you can customize the documents that go out, right? You can have your realtor partner's name tagged or listed on your pre-approval and your real estate partner sees that pre-approval, which goes to them, but it also goes to the client. Hey, it's got my name on it. So if another agent gets this thing and they're like, well, who this agent listed here, <laughs> the client's just trying to hand it off. They get a PDF with this agent's number, right? So we love that. I mean, they, they actually, they like her because it creates that, um, um, that, that I don't say forced loyalty, but I I generally don't want to work with the client who's going to be the agent who introduced them to me. And, I, and the reason is because I feel like at the point where I've done a lot of work called listing agents on Saturdays and Sundays to, to, to apply the case, right? And try to get you this deal. Call me up on Monday and say, oh, I was online and saw better guys offering interest rate X. I guess that's how I feel. If you're willing to drop your agent, I feel like you're gonna treat me the same way. So what I do is I, I co-brand that pre-approval letter for the customer and say the same thing. Like I, I just wrote that down with bad sales, the branded. I haven't even used the co-branded application link yet. But I promise you, I'm going to get some realtor headshots today, add them in <laughs> to all of their profiles, and co-brand every day of the application, like I sit out for an agent at the W4 client at this point. Boom. We got the client. Here's your agent. Here's their info. And that link's going to have their picture on it. Like, I, nice, I just picked nice. that up. Yeah. Boom. Uh, well, I, I just picked up your one. I, I literally wrote the note, agent name on the pre-approval. I haven't done that yet. So so here we are learning from each other. Some more best practices. Learning this, <laughs> learning from each other already. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are awesome. That's so cool. I'm glad we can, um, you know, this is obviously for new users, but it's awesome that you guys are on here as active Arrive users. And you guys are learning new things as well. So that's really cool. Um I want to actually think you said earlier, Matt, you were talking about how maybe other systems are a bit archaic. Um, they don't really do updates or, or listen to feedback and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about, um, because you know what Arrive, we're obsessed with feedback. We want all of your feedback, all of your opinions, all of your recommendations. Can you talk a little bit about um, kind of the role that the Facebook group plays and and the arrive team and how we you know utilize that feedback right yeah i mean i saw it in real time you know might not have been my feedback but i see the community asking for like hey can we have a search bar that does this and can we have this do that and then you see it actually implemented um in in real time that's cool and you know it's easy to spot companies that are innovating fast growing fast doing things to get better and like i said at the start right like if if you've got Arrive, who's continually getting better every week and they're already like light years ahead of the next thing, like they're just going to create more space in the future by, by getting better. And, um, you know, the the Calixes of the world, uh, the, the banks of the world, you know, that are, that are, you know, archaic in some of their processing systems and, and writing loans, right? They'll, they'll get left further and, and further behind. Um, all the great companies that we work with, you know, UWM is a great example. When I sat on the advisory council for them, we'd sit in a room full of executives, we'd give feedback, and then Matt would point to marketing and say, all right, Sarah, you got that? Good. All right. We'd have some some feedback for IT and he'd look at Justin. All right, Justin, you ready to roll on that? Can we have that by next Friday? 
and it's happening in real time, getting better feedback from the users that are using it, right? Um, same thing with, with Arrive. Um, Harish and the whole staff is, is great about, you know, not just listening to feedback, but being proactive about like, give us feedback. We want to get better. We don't necessarily know what the pain points are unless you say it. Um, and that's one thing that's probably important for, um, you know, the, the users that have been on it the longest is continue to give the feedback because if you have an issue with something like me and Gilbert don't know what we don't know, right? right. We're using, we're, we're using what we know of the platform and it's, and it's amazing and it's working great. But you know, I didn't know that I could put my agent's name on the pre-approval letter. He didn't know how cool these branded links were. Like we, we got to continue to share so that we could all get better together. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great point. So sharing is a, is a huge part. Um, of what we believe in, right? Like we we want you guys to to be active together and share knowledge together and, and share information with us as well. So Gilbert, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, are you active in the Facebook group? Have you personally submitted any feedback, um, any of that? So just on, on feedback and, and Matt brought it up, watching the things that we say, hey, it'd be great if this was a feature and then literally hearing back from Harish or somebody on the team that that's under development, that'll be implemented in September by September, that's under development. You'll see that on our next update coming out in three weeks, that's under development. Literally the things we ask for, the most important features, I guess, you know, they hear regularly and then they say, oh yeah, we're already working on it. So yeah, on the Facebook group, I know we get, we that the Arrive Facebook group, you'll see a, a message about something and then either someone has the solution already or you hear, hey, we're working on that solution um, already or that one, they, they're honest with you. You know what? We're working on these higher priority items that have a bigger impact and that's that's on our list of things to get to and we'll get to around this time frame. So just, um, I can't say that we had any of that with our previous load origination system. We saw a problem, they were like, eh, yeah, or here's maybe a weak workaround for it, um, or hi, you gotta pay for more technical support <laughs> and services to get this issue out. Like, live and active improvement is probably the best of arrive that I would say uh, that keeps us engaged. We started, there were some issues to use, but reporting was really difficult. They must have fixed the reporting thing within the first three to six months and made it much easier to pull your reports. Um, inside, we had a few issues. They got those things resolved quickly. Real time. That improve usability is is huge, right? It's is big, and if you feel like a valued customer, when people take your opinion or your idea and implement, it helps others. Yeah, I love that you brought that up. Um, we definitely want to make sure that everyone who is supporting us, that we are supporting you guys right back. So I appreciate you bringing that up. My final question for you guys, Matt, I'm going to start with you. What would you say to someone who is maybe on the fence of using Arrive? They're thinking about it, but you know they're weighing their options. What would you say to them? I mean, I think that the proof is kind of in the pudding and, and it's it's widespread enough now, like maybe in 2018, 2019, you couldn't find a lot of people that were on it, using it, having success with it. But like envision a world where the pricing with all your favorite lenders is, is in one spot. Your application and all the borrower info is in one spot. Um, you know, notes with your team is all in one spot. One click AUS, all in one spot. Um, like having all of that in one place, like I, can't, I don't even know how we did it, right? Where it's like, we've got Calyx Point open. We've got Flowify open. UWM portals open. Home Point portals open. Caliber, EPM. Like, we've got all these different lenders and we're trying to price at different ones, look at the different rate sheets. Like, it's all in one spot. Um, it's really 
Like, I, I wouldn't f- think that there's any good reason not to make the switch, right? Um, it's it's proven now, right? In 2019, you might have been scared because they're still working on some things, right? In 2022, um, it's dialed in. It's getting better every week, but it's it's dialed in. You know, the workflow where you can look at like all the different statuses and and you've got a team updating things and the notes and everything that goes into it, it just creates um, great client experience, which is what every broker should be aiming for, right? If they want future business out of their their partners and their clients. And, um, you know, I can't say enough good things about Arrive. Uh, only regret I have, right, is waiting till the end of 2021 to to make the switch. But since I have, um, it's it's been awesome and it just continues to get better. I learn new stuff every day, like I did today with Gilbert and, and some of the best practices that he's using. That's awesome. Gilbert, same question. What would you say to someone who is on the fence of using Arrive? Jump in. The water is not that cold. Jump in. <laughs> you know, it feels good once you get inside, right? That, that, and that's the truth of it. It just feels good to have a simple, intuitive system. Anybody we've brought into the office hired to assist with loans, the training on Arrive is really easy. Getting them to put notes in the system, not as easy, but the training on, on hey, here you take it and get that customer information straightforward. Why? Because you can hit, fill out all the fields on page one, then fields on page two, then all the fields on page three, and we're done. <laughs> you know, like, we got it. Click, I want to pull a credit report, right? It's so easy. Get in uh, and get in while the getting's good. Get in, don't be left behind. Make your process easy. Make it simple for yourself. Save time. Save time. That's good. Perfectly said. Perfectly said. Matt, Gilbert, thank you guys so much for jumping on and sharing your experiences. It is literally conversations like this one that clarify so much, so much needed information for new Arrive users and, and active Arrive users. So we appreciate you guys taking the time. You can catch us back here live for another episode of Broker Connect in two weeks. Uh, we'll have a new pair of awesome guests for you waiting to share their knowledge. So thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Thanks, Kelly. Bye.